Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. As always, before we start the meeting, we ask our city clerk to read the quote for the week. Madam thank, City Clerk. Thank you, Mayor. Each time you are honest and conduct yourself with honesty, a force will drive you to success. Each time you lie, even a little white lie, there are strong forces pushing you towards failure. Thank you very much. I call the 17th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Warren. Here. Balk. Excuse. Gisha. Here. Hannah. Here. Heidemann. Here. Kittleson. Here. Clionis. Here. Manny. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Ryan. Here. Smith. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Verhasselt. Here. And Wangaman. Here. Fifteen present. Motion. Uh, quorum is present. <laughs> Orman Kittleson, would you please lead us in the pledge? <laughs> <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Kittleson. Before we uh, go to approve the minutes, uh, Alderman Wagaman has asked for some time to speak. Alderman Wagaman. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Mayor. This Friday is December 7th. It's the 66th anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941. On that day at 7.55 in the morning, Forces of the Japanese Imperial Air Force and Navy attacked the island of Oahu without warning. And when the attack was over 110 minutes later, eight major battleships lay either sunk or badly damaged, three cruisers, 188 aircraft, and over 2,400 young Americans lay dead. This day, by many, has been almost forgotten, and it's time that we do pay them some honor. From Sheboygan, Charles C. Aylert was on duty on ship Arizona, and he's still there on duty with his mates. There's a legend about the battleship Arizona. As you stand on the Arizona Memorial, you can see bubbles of oil coming up. And it's told that these bubbles of oil aren't really oil at all, that they're tears of the sailors entombed in the vessel. And the legend goes on to say that when the last Pearl Harbor veteran dies, the oil will stop coming to the surface because then they will all have been laid to rest. I have requested of the mayor, and he has agreed, to issue a proclamation making Friday, December 7th, 2007, Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. It's not a day we want to celebrate, it's a day we want to remember. And I have further asked that all flags in the city be lowered to half staff starting at 8 o'clock in the morning until noon on all city and public buildings, including schools. If anybody out there who flies the flag on a commercial business, I would ask that they do the same. I would further ask that this become a yearly remembrance uh, thing. It must be remembered that nobody in the United States seems to have any re day of remembrance set aside for the 2,400 people that died at Pearl Harbor. Senator Daniel Inouye of uh, Hawaii, yearly presents a document into the Congress to try and get this be made a national day of remembrance. And each time it's voted down. So I'd like to see Sheboygan stand in the forefront on this and maybe it's a practice that'll spread and maybe we'll be known as the place where it all started. So on this Friday, if you have a flag, I would certainly request that you uh, fly it at half staff from eight in the morning until noon. So thank you very much and thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Next item on the agenda, approval of the minutes, President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move for approval of the minutes. Second. Motion and second to approve minutes under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, stated today to the honorable members of the council, pursuant to the requirements of section 7.30 of the Wisconsin statutes, 
I herewith submit for your approval the list of nominated election inspectors for all elections in 2007. The aforementioned section of the law stipulates the manner in which election officials shall be chosen, and I tender my appointments as follows to retain as much seniority and experience as is possible while complying with the state law. Respectfully submitted, Juan Perez, Mayor. And there are a number of pages uh, with the matrix attached. This will lie over. Hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration to the Wellness Committee. Alder persons Jean Kittleson and James Gisha, Marion Health, Scott Navis, William Adams, Jack Vanderweel, Patrick Dugan, Chase Longmiller, Michael Williams, the Human Resources Director, and the Finance Director. The two aldermen's terms to expire 4 14 08, and all the citizen non aldermanic members. Terms expire 430-08. Signed by the mayor. The motion to confirm. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would make a motion to confirm. Second. Motion and second to confirm appointments under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is presentation by the Tourism Department. Ms. Wisher, would you please step forward? Good evening, Your Honor and members of the Council. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you tonight and update you on the tourism activities. We've had a busy past year, and I'll try to briefly go over a couple of the things that we have done. We received a sales promotion GEM, Joint Effort Marketing Grant, from the Wisconsin Department of Tourism for $37,544 to promote Sheboygan businesses and increase lodging occupancy. As part of the winter sales promotion, Shops, Sundries, and Style on Sheboygan Shores, we hosted our first annual Winter Arts Festival. We promoted local and regional artists and welcomed 743 people to our first year event in February. In your packets are examples of our print advertisements that we used during the campaign. We also used a variety of media, radio, direct mail, and internet banner ads. As part of this campaign, we created our first coupon booklet. We contacted all city businesses and requested a discount offering. The booklets were distributed to visitors through the 12 city lodging properties, and to date we've distributed almost 10,000 books. We also received a new event, GEM, Joint Effort Marketing Grant, from the Wisconsin Department of Tourism for $23,145. Sipping on Sheboygan Shores was held in March at the Blue Harbor Conference Center and welcomed 850 attendees. We sold 63 overnight lodging packages, many of which include dinner and spa treatments. Again, we utilized various media outlets including print, radio, cable television, direct mail, and internet banner ads. In addition to the first quarter marketing expenditures that I've mentioned, we also hosted travel writers, we consistently maintained contact with our local and regional media outlets, and we appeared on Good Day Wisconsin, a Green Bay Appleton TV morning show. Increasing our use of technology to reach visitors, we incorporated PayPal into our website. This has allowed us to sell tourism packages online and accept credit card payments. Our first quarter marketing efforts reaped a 6% increase in room tax collections. We debuted our lodging internet video in late March. Thanks to TV8, we were able to provide a virtual tour of our lodging properties and showcase the beautiful places that we have in the city on our website. Our second quarter marketing efforts garnered a 2.9% increase in room tax collections. We continue to maintain updated lodging availability reports on our website. We are currently assisting the YMCA of Sheboygan County with lodging for the 2008 National Gymnastics Tournament. We began our partnership with the county tourism entities in February of 2006, and that group is now known as the Tourism Alliance of Sheboygan County. We are an active member and we assist with cooperative efforts whenever possible. We recognized that the 2007 U.S. Senior Open at Whistling Straits this past July would have a positive effect on Sheboygan lodging properties, and we believed that Sheboygan County businesses should benefit as well. To that end, we created a county tourism effort 
that assisted tourism attendee in lodging. We worked closely with the Kohler Championship team to assist corporate, corporate guests and tournament attendees by arranging for lodging and creating a lodging availability report. Our goal was to keep guests in Sheboygan County, not Milwaukee or Manitowoc County. We coordinated an information booth at Whistling Straits during the tournament and were on site to assist visitors with their information requests. Over 100,000 attendees were at the tournament and we proved that we're able to coordinate lodging and visitor information for large event in future years. Future years, Kohler Championships is hosting the 2010 PGA the 2012 Ladies PGA, the 2015 PGA, and the 2020 Ryder Cup. We will continue to work our, to maintain our strong relationships with Kohler and will keep our businesses aware of future opportunities. In early summer, the marina webcam was installed. On Labor Day, the Blue Harbor Resort webcam was installed. These cameras provide a picturesque live view of our lakefront. The saying, a picture is worth a thousand words, is true. These web pages are averaging over 2,000 visitors per month. We understand that live views of our community are a very effective tool in promoting Sheboygan, and drawing visitors to our website is a top priority in our marketing strategy. Recognizing the unique activities and the hometown flavor of our July 4th, we took an active role in promoting the city's Independence Day activities. We met with law, law enforcement officials, the mayor's office, and other participants and created a flyer that informed our residents of the activities occurring in the city, as well as providing information on city ordinances such as beach fires and fireworks. We distributed the flyer to every household in Sheboygan County, 49,001, through the Sheboygan Sun, and along with our tourism efforts, included it in our fulfillment. The flyer was also available online at our website, visitsheboygan.com. In addition to the city events, we worked with our county tourism partners and created a flyer that was distributed to corporate patrons and visitors at Whistling Straits during the U.S. Senior Open. We also made the county listing available on the TASC website, visitsheboygancounty.com. We coordinated one of Mayor Perez's concerts in the park on Friday, July 6th. We invited the Britons, a Beatles student, to play at Fountain Park and we worked with the Mayor's International Committee on Beverage Sales. We had terrific attendance and very good feedback. In talking with the city lodging properties, we identified Labor Day as a time when most experience lower occupancy rates. We took this opportunity to create the South Pier Labor Day Festival. We incorporated the Dairyland Surf Classic into the festival, added family-friendly activities including a carnival, inflatables for young children, an arts and crafts fair, and live music for two days. While we heard some comments questioning why we were competing with the Sheboygan County Fair, we recognized that we were offering visitors a multitude of activities for their last summer weekend. In talking with families who came up for the weekend, many praised the variety of activities and events that they could enjoy, and this told us that we were successful in our effort. On September 7th, we partnered with Blue Harbor Resort and Johnsonville Sausage to host a live remote with WKLH, Milwaukee Radio 96.5. We hosted Bratz for Breakfast. Hosting one of the top morning radio crews for a live five-hour broadcast was challenging and overwhelmingly successful in that we reached one of our key target markets. Our third quarter marketing efforts garnered a 1.7% increase, increase in room tax collections. To date, the Tourism Division has experienced a 10.6% increase in room tax collections over the previous year. Our final activity for this year was Shopping on Sheboygan Shores, a retail event at Blue Harbor Resort, November 16th and 17th. We welcomed local and regional retailers who beautifully displayed their products and services, and we hosted almost 1,000 attendees. We recently received news from the Department of Tourism that our Ready, Set, Go sports marketing grant on behalf of the Sheboygan County YMCA was funded $15,000. This will assist the YMCA in their efforts to host the 2008 National Gymnastics Tournament. We also just received notification from the Wisconsin Department of Tourism that we were awarded a new event, GEM, Joint Effort Marketing Grant, for $22,525 for the 2008 Sipping on Sheboygan Shores. Our state likes beer and wine. 
We continue to search for funding opportunities that allow us to promote city businesses, attractions, and amenities. We've been taking an active role in collaborating with the Blue Harbor Conference Center to attract meetings and conferences. We are now finalizing our DVD that will be sent to meeting planners that showcases the Conference Center as well as other city facilities, including the John Michael Kohler Arts Center and the Stephanie H. Weil Center for Performing Arts. We've discovered that we have several venues that can host meetings of various sizes. We also highlighted city restaurants, shopping opportunities, and local attractions. This critical visual tool will greatly assist us in promoting Sheboygan as a meeting destination. As we approach the new year, we are optimistic that the city of Sheboygan will continue its upward trend of awareness as a year-round tourism destination. To ensure that Sheboygan remains attractive to visitors and is an excellent visitor destination, we will continue to promote our attractions, our activities, and our amenities. We understand that fun events and unique activities are a consistent way in which to attract people to our community. With that being said, our upcoming work plans include February 15th and 16th, our second annual Winter Arts Festival. March 29th, our second annual Sipping on Sheboygan Shores Microbrew and Wine Tasting Festival. June 13th and 14th, our new event, Roar on Sheboygan Shores, a motorcycle event at Deland Park. June 27th, we've gotten another of Mayor Perez's concerts in the park featuring Crossfire, a country band. July 3rd and 4th, we have the opportunity to coordinate our Independence Day activities for 2008. August 28th, we've sold another one of Mayor Perez's concerts in the park and are welcoming the Doo-Wop Daddies. And August 29th and 30th, we'll be hosting our second annual Labor Day Festival. November 21st and 22nd, we are hosting our second annual Shopping on Sheboygan Shores retail event. In addition to the upcoming events that I've listed, we are also exploring hosting a film festival and other outdoor activities. We continue work on our seasonal tourism publication and are regularly updating our website. Our website traffic has increased dramatically in the last year, and we are now averaging over 18,000 visitors per month. I respectfully thank you for your time in presenting to you tonight, and I look forward to working with you to achieve success in 2000. Well, Hannah, did you speak? Yeah, just thank you very much. I, I'm not sure historically what our growth in room tax collection has been, but 10.6% increase over 2006 is fairly phenomenal. And I would imagine it's a significant increase over our historic rate. So kudos okay. to our tourism group. Kim, Kim has done an, incredibly, an incredible job, an excellent job, um, in spite of perhaps some people saying we weren't going to do that and you weren't going to be able to do it. But you have done. Um, you make us look good. Thank you, Kim. Next item on the agenda is present uh, public forum. Madam City Clerk. Thank you. <clears throat> um, first on the list is Dulcie Johnson. Delcy, do you want to put the mic towards you just a little bit? And then I need your home address, please. 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. Okay, and you will have five minutes. <clears throat> Thank you. Mayor Perez and members of the council. I was astounded to learn recently that Mayor Perez had Fire Chief Lestowski send a letter to all entities in the county presently served by Orange Cross to explore their interest in signing on with the Sheboygan Fire Department for ambulance services for mutual benefit. No wonder Chief Lestowski needs 54 firemen paramedics on his payroll. As I understand it, the only bite came from the town of Wilson. And on November 5th, three Sheboygan Fire Department personnel gave a PowerPoint presentation to the town of Wilson with a follow-up presentation on November 26th. If I remember correctly, the council only authorized the fire department to provide ambulance service to the city of Sheboygan. And the proposal was to operate two ambulances full-time with a third on standby. When did the council authorize the mayor to explore extending ambulance service to other municipalities and towns? 
When was the department authorized to operate three ambulances with a full standby? Since the original plan was to cover the city with two ambulances, one must presume that the third would serve the town of Wilson. If you're going to consider extending ambulance services outside the city, the only way this should happen is through annexation. The taxpayers of the city of Sheboygan, your constituents, cannot be expected to subsidize ambulance service for the town of Wilson. You have unnecessarily burdened the taxpayers with hundreds of thousands of dollars for equipment, high salaries, and bonus pay. Are the residents of the town of Wilson going to receive the benefit of this investment with nothing expected in return? When I was on the council, there were a lot of homeowners in the towns who wanted city water. The policy was simple. No water service extensions without annexation. And as a result, the city annexed numerous properties from the towns. Expanding the ambulance service will require additional firefighter paramedics at twice what Orange Cross pays their paramedics. In addition, firemen paramedics receive bonus pay. The situation is out of control. The original proposal was for 18 paramedics, and suddenly that number grew to 24, and I don't remember any response from the council to this change in the plan. The fire department seems to be running the show. The ambulance issue has been dealt with behind the scenes, behind closed doors, and your constituents expect better and deserve better. The votes on the ambulance issue were cast before the document even reached the council floor. Walking quorums are a violation of Wisconsin's open meeting laws, and all who participated and those who succumbed to the pressure of this tactic should be dealt with accordingly. You are spending more time and seeking more input on whether people can drink beer on the city sidewalks than you spent on the ambulance issue, a life and death issue. A serious consequence of your decision that has never been discussed is the dilution of paramedic skills because of the increased number of paramedics who will be practicing life-saving skills. You have chosen to essentially double the number of paramedics who will be on call, which will be result in fewer opportunities for any paramedic to perform complicated skills and possibly could have serious consequences for the patients being treated. Perhaps if the issue had received due diligence and proper discussion, someone might have realized this critical fact. Further, although a recent letter in the press pronounced that the firefighters were educated, qualified, and experienced, we have since learned that they are doing ride-alongs with the Fond du Lac and Manitowoc Fire Departments because they are obviously not experienced and or qualified. There is a big difference between serving as a first responder and being a paramedic solely responsible for the care of the patient. I have long contended that we have too many firemen with not enough to do. If the department can operate without sub-firemen on any day for ride-alongs, perhaps the department is overstaffed and should consider reducing their roster to more accurately reflect the need. And how many hours have been consumed by the fire department administration in formulating the ambulance service plan? I attended the Business Improvement District Annual Meeting at the Blue Harbor Conference Center this fall. The program was presented by the designers of the pedestrian bridge. To my surprise, three fire department personnel were in attendance. I was seated at a table with Alderman Kittleson and remarked on their presence, to which she said that the white shirts, those were her words, didn't start work until 8 o'clock. When I left the meeting at 8.30, the three white shirts were still wandering around Blue Harbor and looking at the pedestrian bridge model. Why was it necessary for three fire department administration personnel to attend? Why was it necessary for even one to attend? A few days later, as I was walking down by the marina, I noticed a fire truck in the parking lot and three firemen in blue shirts on the dock where what is referred to by some as their toy boat is moored. It was late in the season and I called to them and asked what was going on, to which one replied that they were doing maintenance, which was very interesting as the one who answered me was just standing looking at the toy boat and the other two were wandering around the dock looking at the other boats that were moored there. No doubt there are a lot of boat owners who would be pleasantly surprised to learn that they can maintain their Excuse boat by me, standing on the dock and looking at it. Would you like your additional minute? Thank you. Sure. But back to the town of Wilson. With an average of only one call a week to the town of Wilson, will the costs involved pay the expenses of operating the ambulance, or will your constituents, the taxpayers of the city of Sheboygan, be subsidizing ambulance service for the residents of the town of Wilson? That is why such an extension of service should not be considered without annexation. Of course, if the city were to contract with the town of Wilson rather than calling 911, town of Wilson residents would also have the option of calling Orange Cross's new number, 4519111. I urge you not to set a dangerous precedent of contracting for city ambulance services without requiring annexation. 
That is only fair to the taxpayers of the city of Sheboygan, your constituents, the people who elected you. Thank you. Thank you. And next would be Randy <coughs> Meyer. And Mr. Meyer, can you give me your home address, please? 3107 North 26th Street. Okay, can you will have five minutes, sir. And may I have the extra minute? I'll tell you on the five, yeah. I have a letter to read that was sent to the city attorney by my wife's uh, attorney. And my wife is, of course, Alderman Vicki Meyer. Dear city attorney, I have recently been retained to represent Alderman Victoria Meyer. The significant substantive and procedural violations in the actions taken against Alderman Meyer relating to Resolution 152-07-08 have made it impossible for Alderman Meyer to receive fair treatment in this matter and require that the Common Council take no further action on the resolution. I have carefully reviewed the code of ethics contained in the Municipal Code for the City of Sheboygan and have reviewed in particular section 2-267. I strongly object to the section being used to support censure of Alderman Meyer and her removal as chairperson of the Committee of the Whole. Resolution 152-07-08 is being used for an improper purpose to chill free expression and for political gain. Section 2-267 is an aspirational statement. Even if Section 2-267 were not unconstitutionally vague for its present use, Alderman Meyer has not violated the responsibilities set forth therein. The conversation at issue between Bob Ryan and Alderman Meyer was a private conversation and was not an official act. Mr. Ryan is the individual who has taken official acts in bad faith based on mischaracterizations of the events and apparently for a purely personal and political gain. The double standard applied by the Common Council and the Ethics Board against Alderman Meyer should not be condoned. Alderman Meyer has not provided a hearing before the Common Council or Ethics Board as required by constitutional guarantees of due process. Such minimal procedural rights are also required by Robert's Rules of Order which the Common Council is bound to follow. The complaint investigatory and hearing procedures set forth in Wisconsin statutes have not been followed. Because the, the alleged improper conduct did not occur at a meeting, the Common Council and Ethics Board have no firsthand knowledge of the case. Therefore, if disciplinary action is to be taken, charges must be preferred and a formal trial held before the assembly of the society or before a committee, standing or special, which should be required to report its findings and recommendations to the assembly for action. That this whole affair is simply a political witch hunt is obvious from the council's complete failure to follow its own procedures, which require a confidential investigation and trial. Alderman Meyer has the right that allegations against her good name shall not be made except by charges brought on reasonable ground. She has the right to due process. That is to be informed of the charge and given time to prepare her defense, to appear and defend herself, and to be fairly treated. The reason for these minimal requirements is obvious, yet none have been afforded to Alderman Meyer in this situation. Because the charges were not supported by an investigating committee's recommendation, the resolution should have been postponed indefinitely. The resolution was also improper because it implied the truth of specific rumors and contained insinuations unfavorable to Alderman Meyer. Finally, as is obvious, even without referring to the governing rules, fairness generally demands that the committee or some of its members meet with the accused for a frank discussion and to hear her side of the story. No trial has been scheduled or conducted and Alderman Meyer is entitled to at least 30 days to allow her to prepare her defense. Alderman Meyer has done nothing wrong 
In contrast to Bob Ryan's substantiated allegations, she never threatened him with anything. The Council and Ethics Board would be aware of these facts if it had only followed its own procedures. Alderman Meyer engaged in a private political debate with Bob Ryan. In response to Alderman Meyer's expression of her views, Ryan, for his own political gain, has portrayed a simple exchange as a threat in an effort to portray himself as a victim while bringing out into the open personal issues that apparently had widely circulated as rumors. The Common Council's condoning Bob Ryan's actions violates Alderman Meyer's rights under the free speech, due process, and equal protection clauses of the United States and Wisconsin constitutions. Bob Ryan's statements about Alderman Meyer are also defamatory. Given the complete failure to follow proper procedures and violation of Alderman Meyer's rights, this matter should be put to rest and no further action taken. And that's signed Victor Ariano, attorney with Lawton and Kate's law firm, Bob Ryan. My wife didn't do anything to you. You did, did this all to yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Is that it? <clears throat> That's it. Thank you very much for uh, thank you to the persons who have addressed the council. Next item, Alderman Montemayor. Can you <clears throat> say something? Thank you, Your Honor. Before we move on to the consent agenda, I would like to pull forward agenda item number 1751. We proceed. I make a motion to file. Second. I'm sorry, who seconded it? Motion and second to file under discussion. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. It appears that a vote will be held this night despite the complete failure to afford me even the minimal process required by the United States and Wisconsin constitutions and by the Common Council's own rules. Because my alleged improper conduct did not occur at the meeting, the Common Council and Ethics Board have no first-hand knowledge of the case. Therefore, for any disciplinary action to be taken, a confidential investigation and formal trial must be held. Roberts Rules of Order, 10th of page 630-31. I object to any action being taken against me in the absence of the required procedures and especially in the absence of a formal trial. I never threatened Alderperson Bob Ryan. My conversation with him was private. I have remained quiet and composed during these humiliating times because I believe that public officials must have the right and ability to engage in private conversation with each other. Unfortunately, the private conversation between Alderperson Ryan and me is no longer private. Because formal procedures have not been followed, I have never been asked to tell my side of the story. On Friday, November 9th, before a special meeting of the Common Council, I asked Alderperson Ryan if he would talk to me outside the Council Chambers. He agreed, and he went to the hallway to have a private conversation. During the conversation, I told Alderperson Ryan that I was disappointed with his demeaning comments about the mayor and that he had embarrassed the council by making those despairing statements. Alderperson Ryan said he was a great leader and that I was a blind follower. I then asked him if he was drunk when he had made the comments about the mayor. Ryan asked why I would say that. I responded that there are rumors that he is a drunk. In response, Ryan blew into my face and asked if it smelled like he had been drinking. He then pointed his fist and finger at my face. When I told him to get his finger out of my face, he said something to the effect that there are rumors about me too. After additional discussion regarding our political differences, Alderperson Ryan walked away from me. When he returned to the council chambers, I heard him repeatedly tell Alderpersons Wangaman and Hannah in a <clears throat> mocking way, she's disappointed in me. At no point did I threaten Alderperson Ryan. The above statement is not a substitute for the process required by the Common Council's rules and state and federal law. I do not waive any right to such process by making the above statement. I make this statement solely in an effort to achieve the only appropriate outcome in this matter, to file this resolution. 
I support the motion to file this resolution because the process has been flawed to the point where I can no longer be judged fairly and confidentially as our rules require. This council has already voted not to take action against me and nothing has occurred that supports a second vote on the same acts. In order to keep what is left of the fair process fair, I will abstain from voting. I ask older person Ryan also abstain. Further, I respectfully ask that older person Gisha honorably abstain from speaking or voting because it appears from comments he made publicly in this chamber and in emails that he has already made up his mind that I am guilty. To the rest of the older persons, I ask that when you vote on this resolution, you recognize both the factual truth that I did not threaten older person Ryan and that the violations of my rights to free association, free speech, equal protection, and due process dictate that this resolution be filed. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's a sad day for this council. Every day we have, every, every council meeting we start out with, with our quote. And uh, there are things that kind of just go over our heads. and We really never pay attention to them. But today's quote says, Each time you are honest and conduct yourself with honesty, a force will drive you to success. Each time you lie, even a little white lie, there are strong forces pushing you toward failure. Written by Joseph Sugarman. Who that is, I personally have no idea. The... Notice of appearance, the letter from Alder Persons Meyer's, Meyer's latest attorney, speaks of a conversation between Alder Person Meyer and Bob Ryan. Maybe if it was just Alder, Alder Person Meyer and Bob Ryan, it wouldn't be an issue. But it was Alder Person Meyer and Alderman Ryan outside of these council chambers. I'm called Bob Ryan, Mr. Ryan. Ten times in this letter. It wasn't between Mr. Ryan and Alderperson Meyer. It was between Alderman Ryan and Alderperson Meyer. As far as Alderperson Meyer, finally speaking of our conversation, um, several flaws here to say the least. Stating that she said she was disappointed and the council was disappointed in me. The word council was never mentioned. She said, I told her I was a great leader. Even if I thought of myself as such, I certainly wouldn't use that term, great leader. Um, I mean, they, her recollection of this conversation obviously is flawed to say the least. I, she says, I said there were rumors about her too. Never happened. I never told her there were rumors about her, too, because I was too interested in what rumors were out there about me and why, why she was doing this to me. Her attorney says that I've done this for political gain. I've done it for, my, my, for pure, purely personal gain. Sure, I've, I've, uh, I've put out there in public that I've had marital problems, that I may have over-imbibed over in alcohol more than one time in my life that my family didn't want me to run for political office for personal gain. Oh, I sure gained a lot out of it, let me tell you. Makes me feel real good. This is sad. I mean, this is sad. I'll say no more. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I say again. None of this fits the criteria. This whole process has been damaged beyond repair and to the point where Alderman Meyer simply cannot be judged fairly anymore. Because of prejudgments and the manner in which this matter has been handled, Alderman Meyer has suffered unmeasured damage to her character and family. Three times public humiliation. The victim here is Alderman Vicki Meyer and not Alderperson Bob Ryan. None of us can help her with that now, but we sure can put an end to this mess tonight. We owe it to ourselves and the taxpayers of Sheboygan to end this nonsense now. Given the letter from Attorney Ariano, 
There may be potential litigation if this council persists, persists in taking action against Alderman Meyer. There are constitutional issues and cons dealing with legislative rights, freedom of speech, the right of association, the right of equal protection of the law, and the right of due process. I'm going to ask you several questions before you vote. Do you want to find yourself or the city in court answering these potential claims that may cost the taxpayers thousands of dollars in litigation and perhaps subject each of us to liability? Are you confi confident that in regard to Section 2, 263 of the code, our code, we have protected to the fullest extent possible the rights of Alderman Meyer and that she has been treated fairly? Are you confident that Section 262 of the code, being an aspiration and not a mandate for attorneys, is the legal, legally proper way to handle a private conversation between two older persons outside the council chamber and impose severe, humiliating again, and damaging action against Alderman Meyer? Are you confident that we have afforded Alderman Meyer the confidentiality and fairness she is entitled to by our rules of order and our rules of procedure. Are you aware we have not taken the proper steps in a fair disciplinary process against Alderman Meyer? Do you accept the recommendation from the Ethics Board comes to the com Common Council without due process, without an investigation, without confidentiality, and that the allegations are completely <clears throat> unfounded? Do you accept the fact that because of this, Alderman Meyer is no longer able to be judged fairly, either by us or the public? And finally, are you fully confident that this council has not violated Alderman Vicki Meyer's legislative rights, her freedom of speech, her right of association, her right to equal protection of the law, and her right to due process as they are afforded by her office and the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin? We are the conscience of the city of Sheboygan. We are its voice. We represent the people, not vendettas, personal interests, and those seeking political gain. We can put an end to this tonight. I ask that you do and vote with me to file agenda item number 1751. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Alderman Montemayor. Alderman Gisha. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Perez. Um, I'm not going to speak on this very much. Um, uh, I'd just like to respond to two points. First of all, the suggestion that I abstain because I've already made up my mind. Uh, perhaps then all eight other aldermen who voted in the Ethics Committee should also abstain because they obviously made up their minds. I think that's uh, uh, a ridiculous uh, notion. Um, the other point is that it's been said through this letter, through Mr. Meyer's comments, and Alderperson Meyer's comments of political motivation that brought us here. I'd like to address that. I've tried to address it in the past, but I'll do it one more time. I'd like a show of hands from aldermen that I've called to put, ask questions about how they're going to vote on this or to try to talk them into voting one way or the other or giving my opinion that, and to try to sway them. Anybody? Anybody? Nobody, because I didn't do it. I'm the only person whose name is on that resolution. I didn't get 20 other signatures or five other signatures or whatever was necessary because I didn't want the process to be political. Alderman Ryan never talked to me about putting this resolution in and I never talked to him about it. I did it. So what political gain does Jim Gisha have out of doing this? Anybody want to help? It's because there's none. I have no issue with Alderperson Meyer. I've enjoyed serving on committees with her. Sent her a note to say that very fact. I've enjoyed working with her on many committees. I've enjoyed working with Alderperson Ryan on no committees, but a couple of projects. So what's my, if there's going to be politics involved, it's got to start with me because it's my name on the resolution. There is no politics involved here. The only thing that's involved here is the honor of this body. And the suggestion that a person must be under oath to tell the truth is is not a notion that I'm familiar with. I don't need to be under oath to tell the truth. I don't need to under, be under oath to, to uh, speak my side of the story. I don't need to be under oath to honestly say how I feel and what happened. And uh, 
I believe the council did follow the correct procedure. We are within our authority, and uh, I will not be abstaining on this vote at all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. I recognize the next speaker in line. I ask that you follow our procedure, address the chair, not each other, and not the public. Alderman Manning. Thank you, Your Honor. Two simple words. Uh, I do believe that Alderperson uh, Gisha is strictly uh, operating on principle by bringing this resolution to this body. Two simple words. Intention and interpretation. Those two words define for me our inability to deal with this issue. They are not directly involved. These, these kind of tasks are not involved in the core of the ethics code that is at the basis of this city's concern and, and direction for ethical behavior from we who sit in these chairs. Therefore, it's ambiguous. We have no clear ability to evaluate either intention or interpretation. It's a waste of our time. This kind of thing needs to be settled at the ballot box by the voters. Thank you very much. Thank you, Owen Manny. Next we have President Hanna. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I have a question for Attorney McClain. May I address Please do. the attorney? Um, during this process, um, I too, nobody has called me, which I really appreciate. During this process, uh, were you guiding all the person Gisha in the procedure in, in crafting the resolution? Um, to the best of your knowledge, uh, did he follow the appropriate procedure or were there violations along the way? Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Alderman Gisha provided me a copy of a draft resolution that he was going to submit. And Alderman Gisha and I differ on our interpretation or recollection of our discussion, but uh, the issue was, and it came out later on, you know, why was this referred to the ethics board and, and, and why wasn't it just acted on when, when the document called for uh, the committee directing the ethics board to convene and investigate when it could have been acted on. It's my recollection of our conversation that uh, it gotten this format from the city clerk and the city clerk had indicated that prior documents had been referred and that's why it was put on for referral. So that, that was my discussion with Alderman Gisha. Perhaps my recollection of that discussion about referral is incorrect, but that's the discussion I've had. I haven't been advising him on any other procedures other than that. Uh, and I, perhaps now is the time, if you wish, I can address uh, Attorney Ariano's letter uh, and give you my read on where we are in the process. And uh, I, I, you know, to the certain extent, I appreciate a receipt of uh, Attorney Ariano's letter because uh, one aspect he brought up, I think, has merit, and that has to do with uh, the procedure for disciplinary action of aldermanic members. It's not uh, something that I have encountered in my 20 years of uh, experience as city attorney. It's, and I hope uh, I don't have to encounter it again, frankly. Um, but the process is murky because uh, it hasn't been been used before, and there's nothing concrete that says this is what you do. Uh, he pointed out Robert's Rules of Order, and I agree that the council, by ordinance, adopts Robert's Rules of Order as the procedures of the council, except to the extent that uh, other ordinances uh, supersede or uh, conflict or state law or federal law conflicts. Uh, so I looked, looked at the sections of Robert's Rules of Order that uh, Mr. Ariano cited. And uh, as I say, frankly, this is not an area that I've looked at before on disciplinary procedures for uh, members of societies is how it's phrased in the uh, Robert's Rules. But he makes 
makes a point, and it's in Robert's rules that there is a distinction between uh, disciplinary procedures where the offense occurs in a meeting and disciplinary procedures where the event occurs outside of a meeting. And he cites in his letter the rationale that's in Robert's rules for the difference in that uh, what takes place outside of the meeting is not observed by the entire body. Uh, so at least those that weren't involved personally don't have firsthand knowledge of what took place. Uh, so Robert's rules goes into uh, that distinction and, and makes a distinction then in terms of procedures for dealing with uh, perceived violations uh, if it occurs during a meeting and if it doesn't. And he does quote a section of Robert's rules and that's what it says. Uh, uh, if improper conduct by a member of a society occurs elsewhere than at a meeting, the members generally have no first-hand knowledge of the case. Therefore, if disciplinary action is to be taken, charges must be preferred and a formal trial held before the assembly of the society or before a committee, standing or special, which should be required to report its findings and recommendations to the assembly for action. Uh, I would also note that the section just before that discusses, <clears throat> this is on page 629 of Robert's Rules, 10th edition. If there's an article on discipline in the bylaws, it may specify a number of offenses outside meetings for which penalties um, listed on previous pages can be imposed on a member of the organization. Frequently, such an article provides for their imposition on any member found guilty of conduct described, for example, as tending to injure the good name of the organization, disturb its well-being, or hamper it in its work. Close quote. In any society, behavior of this nature is a serious offense properly subject to disciplinary action, whether the bylaws make mention of it or not. So I think that has to be borne in mind as well. <clears throat> As to the procedure so far, what was submitted by Alderman Gisha back on November 19th was a resolution requesting that the council uh, direct the ethics board to convene and investigate potential improper behavior and to determine what actions, if necessary, if any, to be considered appropriate. That was referred to the ethics board. So no action was taken. The ethics board met uh, last Monday, discussed that, recommended filing that, and recommended adoption of the ordinance that's on the council agenda tonight as document 1751, the committee report, and the ordinance, or the resolution that's attached to that. Um, and that calls for censure and removal of Alderperson Meyer as chairman of the Committee of the Whole. <coughs> Um, the issue next, I, I think, and one of the key issues here is due process. Uh, Attorney Ariano raises the issue that Alder Person Meyer is entitled to due process as required by constitutional guarantees. Uh, I think uh, you've got to parse that a little bit. Due process, the elements of due process really are dependent upon what sort of uh, impact or uh, implication the proposed action is going to have. Um, I looked at case law today, and there, the closest case I could find was out of Vermont, Supreme Court of Vermont, in the case of Stanley Laflame versus Essex Junction School District. In that case, uh, the Essex County School District Board, which uh, the case notes was also subject to Robert's Rules of Order and cited the same sections that we've been discussing, uh, censured Mr. Laflame. Uh, 
and uh, for conduct which occurred outside of a committee meeting or the board meeting. The uh, Supreme Court of Vermont held that the issue really was whether or not censure as a punishment or uh, action uh, gives rise to a procedural due process claim uh, that's recognizable under the 14th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. And the court there said that public censure or reprimand does not give rise to a procedural due process claim so long as injury is solely to a plaintiff's reputation. <clears throat> the court said, we need not decide whether the court was correct in their ruling. As discussed below, this was the lower court, as discussed below, defendants were entitled to judgment in their favor. This is the school district on the due process claim because Laflame failed to establish the requisite elements of a procedural due process violation. The stigma that may result from a defamatory disciplinary action does not by itself implicate a liberty or property interest protected by the due process clause, cites a federal uh, U.S. Supreme Court decision. Uh, <clears throat> then it cites another U.S. Supreme Court decision to contrast reprimand in a public body type of setting from reprimand in a professional disciplinary situation such it cited uh, uh, license to practice law for instance being a property interest such that a reprimand of an attorney uh, implicates a property interest which is recognizable under the due process clause. Uh, in Wisconsin, there's a case, the closest case I could find that ties into this is Newfer versus Village Board of Palmyra, a 1979 Wisconsin Supreme Court case. And the, the relation is that it talks about liberty interests and the examples of charges affecting the liberty interest and reputation described by the U.S. Supreme Court in Roth, uh, charges of dishonesty and immorality. The cases cited in Roth involve charges of alcoholism, communism, subversive activities. None of the charges against Neufer allege him to be immoral or dishonest in the manner he operated his office or accuse him of conduct comparable to charges of disloyalty, communism, subversive activities, or alcoholism. Accordingly, we conclude the board's action does not damage Neufer's standing and associations in the community to the degree necessary to implicate Neufer's liberty interest and his reputation. Now, the, the document before you, the resolution, calls for two things. One is censure, and the other is removal as chairperson of the Committee of the Whole. Uh, at this point, I, I would advise the council that removal of Alderperson Meyer as chairperson of the Committee of the Whole uh, could likely implicate a liberty or property interest such that due process protections of the 14th Amendment would, uh, would be implicated. Uh, because of that, I would, uh, if, if this act, if this resolution is going to go forward, I would advise the council to uh, not take action to do that this evening, but to uh, send the matter back to the ethics board, which could be done by uh, not acting on this document, but acting on the original resolution that came in, uh, which directs the ethics board to convene and investigate potential improper behavior. That would uh, allow for establishment of appropriate due process procedures before uh, taking any action that would involve or implicate liberty or property interests that implicate the due process clause of the 14th Amendment. I think in and of itself, censure, public censure would not. Uh, and it's my opinion that if, if that's all you did, 
you would not have to have a, a prior hearing on that. Uh, so I guess what I offer is options. I think you could take the course as, as the motion is currently on the floor to file and take no action. You could hold the current document uh, for further review and have it come in at the next meeting. You could file the new proposed resolution and act on resolution 152 as it originally stands, which in my view merely directs the ethics board to conduct the investigation uh, that is called for by attorney Ariano. Uh, and that Robert's Rules of Order speak to before taking some final action. Or if the council, again, wishes to act on the new proposed resolution, it would be my recommendation that the uh, reference to removal of Alder Person Meyer from the Committee of the Whole be removed from that before uh, taking action. Uh, Attorney McLean, would you please... Uh, <clears throat> address the council and explain how referring it back to the committee uh, will remedy uh, the two components that are critical in offenses created outside the assembly and in particular holding the investigation in executive session and to protect the confidentiality of the rights of the individual affected. Sending it back will not remedy that. I, I, I need you to explain that to me. I'd be happy to. I guess, first of all, uh, and I hadn't quite finished, the Robert's Rules of Order only applies to the extent it's not inconsistent with existing state law. And you have to look at Robert's Rules of Order in relation to the public meeting laws. So I looked at the exceptions to the public meeting laws. Uh, as, uh, as the mayor indicated, there's reference to uh, various confidential investigations and so forth under Robert's rules. That may tr be true in a non-governmental uh, setting, but I don't think that's the case with a governmental body. The two possible exceptions under the open meeting law are 1985-1C that talks about considering employment, promotion, compensation, excuse me, 19.851B, uh, considering dismissal, demotion, licensing, or discipline of any public employee or person licensed by a board or commission, or the investigation of charges against such person, or considering the grant or denial of tenure for a faculty member and the taking of formal action on any such matter. Uh, the notice shall contain statement that the person has the right to demand that the evidentiary hearing or meeting be held in open session. Uh, the it's an informal attorney general's opinion 1-49 or I-4990 July 20th 1990 that says because 19.851B which is the closed session for discipline and licensing items only covers public employees and persons licensed by a governmental body it cannot be deemed to authorize the Common Council's consideration of the possible discipline of one of its members in closed session. Then the other possible closed session item is for personnel matters. That's in 19.851F. That provides an exception to consider financial, medical, social, or personal histories or disciplinary data of specific persons preliminary consideration of specific personnel problems or the investigation of charges against specific persons except where B applies, which, if discussed in public, would be likely to have a substantial adverse effect upon the reputation of any person referred to in such histories or data or involved in such problems or investigations. The, uh, the comments to that exception provide that However, if the information to be reviewed were already in the public domain, a governmental body would be unable to rely on this exemption because the necessary criterion would be absent. So I would be concerned about 
going into closed session or executive session, as it's referred to in Robert's Rules, uh, where it's a governmental body situation. Uh, I think you would end up, and if we go, much of this deliberation, I think, would need to take place in open session. Any hearing would need to be in open session because there's no other, there's no exceptions under the open meeting law that would provide for closed session. Thank you, Chairman McLean. Alderman Wagaman. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd just like to make one rather short statement. I deeply resent being told that if I don't vote a certain way, I stand to be sued in some way. I resent that strongly. It was a suggestion that I think was wholly improper. It was an, in, an attempt to influence this council. And every member on this council floor should be outraged by that. How dare someone come in here and tell us that if we don't vote a certain way, we're going to be sued. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to take that chance. Alderman Montemayor, you're next. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, may I address Attorney McLean? Please do. Um, given the legal implications and the potential litigation, is it your legal opinion and your advice to us that we persist in disciplining Alderman Meyer? Or is it your advice that we should not persist in disciplining Alderman Meyer? Uh, Alderman uh, Montemayor, I make no opinion on whether you should discipline one of your members or not. That's, I have no opinion on that, and that's your prerogative, not mine. I guess the concern is, from my perspective, is that whatever we do, we follow the, we follow the right procedures. And, you know, as I said earlier, this is not an area that you deal with on a regular basis. So uh, it's important that the procedures be followed. And, and I'm not going to advise you one way or another as to whether to pursue discipline of one of your members. Okay, one more question. Having read our code book extensively, does this whole hallway conversation fit into the criteria of even being considered an ethics violation? Well, um, I don't think it falls specifically under the ethics code, but uh, you know, I thank uh, Attorney Ariano for pointing out the section in Robert's Rules um, that in any society, behavior of this nature is a serious offense properly subject to disciplinary action, whether the bylaws make mention of it or not. And I think the spirit of that was mentioned a number of times in the last two previous meetings, that, uh, that um, conduct that tends to injure the good name of the organization or disturb its well-being or hamper it in its work is something that this body has a right to address if they so choose. Well, I think maybe our attorney is kind of giving us some fuzzy advice. I still think we need to file this resolution, end this matter now. It still does not fit the criteria according to our code book. I don't want to be around for possible litigation. I don't think any of us do. Thank you. Alderman Verhessel. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, boy, I mean, removing someone from a chairmanship, censuring them based on our interpretation of a spirit of something, I think is very scary ground uh, for me. I support filing this document, not because I uh, have any friendship or anything along those lines. I guess it's basically based in the fact that I think the process was flawed uh, for a lot of the reasons that have been stated already. I wish we would have had this sort of legal clarity two weeks ago when this discussion came up. I think it should have been had before Alderman Ryan had his 15 minutes to state his case. Um, I further believe that Alderman Ryan's comments should have been redirected into a closed session. Whenever we start talking about someone's character and defamatory potential, potentially defamatory remarks come up, I think we should be in closed session. Um, I think that the, two, that 
The way this should have been handled is that there should have been a targeted team of people led by your office, Attorney McLean, deposing the two individuals, Alderman Meyer and Alderman Ryan, with some frank, targeted, pointed questions, and that information should have been reported back to this committee, and we would have used that information to make a, a, a more objective decision. Uh, you know, in our heart of hearts, we, we can really only honest, honestly say that we know bits and bits and pieces of Alderman Meyer's side of the story because she's chosen to stay relatively quiet until tonight. Um, based on the buzz that was created at the last council meeting from Alderman Ryan, his family members, and his supporters, and there's nothing wrong with that, but based on that buzz, if I were in Alderman Meyer's shoes, I would have the strong feeling that civil action might be coming outside of these chambers. So I can understand, <clears throat> excuse me, I can understand her decision to stay quiet. Uh, because this thing could take on a life of its own outside of these chambers. You know, another issue that I have with this, I guess, is that if we want as a body to administer justice using this ethics code, we need to be consistent. And I say that because, and again, I, I pointed this out somewhat gingerly in the, in the original meeting two weeks ago, is that the comment that started this entire thing is a blatant violation of our ethics code. And I refer to 2-267, which in the final statement refers to fostering respect for other government officials and the government as a whole. The foot in the mouth complaint, and I don't have the exact quote, but the foot in the mouth complaint that graced the top of the Sheboygan press here roughly a month ago did nothing to foster respect for Sheboygan city government and, or any of, the, any of the officials here in this chamber. Um, furthermore, Alderman Bouk's letter here is another attempt. If you look in the middle, the middle paragraph, uh, he advises people to watch how they vote based on their obvious friendships that extend outside of this chamber. That's an accusation and it's unfounded. And again, it does nothing to foster respect. So I go back to if we as a body are going to be in the, in the, in the business of administering justice or ethical justice, we need to be consistent and apply it across the board, not pick and choose uh, based on the spirit of you know, the interpretation that we, that we see with our ethics code. At this point, the cat's out of the bag. Um, like I said, we heard from Alderman Ryan, and that's fine. We heard from Alderman Ryan's supporters and family. Um, the cat's out of the bag. I don't know if we can get a fair trial, so to say. I think we should have gone to a quasi-judicial hearing scenario where the two parties would have had legal experts alongside them laying out their story carefully. Um, maybe we can, but that's certainly the course we should have taken two weeks ago uh, rather than the course that we did. So. Again, I do not support this document. I recommend that we file it. Thank you, Alderman Hassel. Alderman Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I find this whole thing to be um, very complex and um, full of hurtful words from the point of the newspaper to the hallway to this chamber floor to radio programs. Um, and I find the resolution inadequate to address all that has come about from this. And I think the resolution is not addressing what um, problem it has become and what we face in terms of guiding ourselves in, in moral decisions and also just guiding ourselves in terms of being a, a body that has, that has integrity and honesty. So I cannot support the resolution. I feel as if we're just trying to shove something in the corner, get it over with, and we've gotten ourselves into a big mess. Thank you, Alderman Cleunas. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is all about right and wrong. This is nothing I wanted to happen. Alderman Verhasselt refers to what initially blew the whole thing up, my comments in the Sheboygan Press, saying that the mayor stuck his foot in his mouth. The Sheboygan Press got a hold of me. I did make the comment, and I meant it. I did not mean for it to be headlines. They asked me my opinion on it, I gave them my opinion. I probably shouldn't have said it. However, for Alder Person Meyer to do what she did, to me, was unconscionable. I would not do that to anybody, whether it be in government or outside of government. I would not go to anybody and threaten them See, I know something about you. But now here we are. Now we have attorneys 
threatening to maybe sue us as a city if we make a decision. I know what's right. I know what's wrong. I know what the truth is. And I've told nothing but the truth. 100% of the truth. Stretched anything? I have not enhanced anything or minimized anything. I know what happened. I believe the majority of this council knows what happened. But here we are. Now we can refer this back to the ethics board. We can refer this as a quasi-judicial hearing. I think it needs to be put to bed. I know that wrong was done. In my opinion, a crime was committed. A crime against me, a crime against my family. But for the integrity of this council, and in order to get on with future business, I will make a motion to file also. I will agree with Alderperson Montemayor. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Next we have Alderman Rinklage. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, unfortunately, I had to follow that previous comment. So there. Excuse, excuse, me, the excuse me, I just want to correct something here. Alderman Ryan, you made a motion to file. The motion on the floor is to file. Yes, sir, I understand. I just said that. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Rinklage, please continue. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, Ryan's um, comments took the wind out of my sails, uh, quite frankly. Two weeks ago, I made a motion to uh, censure and move on. It was decided that we needed to investigate uh, and hence uh, refer everything to the Ethics Board. Unfortunately, we did not pass the resolution uh, to empower the Ethics Board to actually do the investigation, to subpoena if need be, or to place anybody under oath to get the full side of the story. Um, I was fully prepared here to make the motion um, beyond the filing to, instead of going to the Ethics Committee, as we know our, our city code is a little, I think, not clear about it, is an ethics violation or not, but rather empower, uh, as according to Robert's rules of order, um, to a committee, standing or special, uh, which we could do to committee of a whole, uh, to uh, further investigate. Uh, something that we could do, not necessarily within the ethics board, but within our own rights to see if the conduct um, um, really harmed the good name of the council. Uh, I was fully prepared to make that motion to proceed with that so we could really do the full investigation. We did not do the ethics committee. An investigation that if we were to do something as serious as remove the chair, chairpersonship of the committee as a whole, I think we need to do. Uh, however, I've heard uh, Alderman Ryan's comments regarding uh, moving forward to the business of the council, uh, and he himself is supporting the motion to file, uh, then I will do so as well uh, with the, you know, I guess with the moment, with mention of gratitude for that older person to take the high road and move on. And I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Place. We have two more, Alderman Vanderbilt and then Alderman Clayunas. Well, thank you, Your Honor. I have a sheet of paper here of comments that I prepared for tonight, but I'm only going to read one sentence. Because when I was thinking about it uh, during, during the week, what I was going to say tonight, to me this is what sums up the whole situation. I've always felt that what politicians say can and will be held against them by everyone. And I agree with Holman and Clay. Who said tonight? I couldn't have said it better tonight uh, myself. And uh, I will support the pilot. Thank you. Thank you. Holman Clay. Thank you, Your Honor. I call the question. Is there a second to that? Second. Under discussion. All in favor, under discussion, all on board? Uh, th thank you, Your Honor. Just so I understand this correctly, by Alderman Ryan saying that he's willing to file this, that if we file it, there's going to be no disciplinary action of any kind, and he's okay with that. Is that, is that my understanding of what Alderman, Ryan, Alderman Ryan is saying? That's what I understood. It ends tonight. Thank you. The motion has been called. I mean, the question has been called. There has been a second. All in favor, say aye. Any opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. The motion, the main motion stands. Motion was to file. There was a second. Please call the roll. Warren? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? 
Montemayor. Aye. Rin Fleisch. Aye. Ryan. Abstain. Smith. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. For Hasselt. Aye. Wongaman. No. Twelve ayes, one no, and two abstentions. Motion carries. We have the consent agenda 17-1 through 17-14. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I almost forgot how to do this. Um, all, I, I make a motion that all ROs be uh, accepted and placed on file and that all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. President Hanna, please Thank continue. Thank you. I, I would like uh, RC 1714 pulled forward for a separate vote. 1714, last one on page three will be pulled forward for a separate vote. I need a motion to uh, accept and adopt the RC. Second. No, motion. Oh, motion. Motion second. is just motion and second to ex uh, accept and adopt 1714. Any discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Abstain. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Rinfleisch, Ryan, Smith, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. for Hasselt, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. and Board. Aye. 14 ayes, 1 abstention. Motion carries. We will take the vote now on 17 1 through 17 13. The motion and second stand. Please call the roll. Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunis, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Aye. Smith, Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. For Hassel, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Boren, Aye. and Gesha. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 1715 through 1717 to be referred. Alderman Montemayor. Oh, Alderman, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had so many lights. <laughs> okay, you go first. And then was there anybody else that hit lights? Okay, please hit it again. Anybody else that hit lights? Please hit it again. Okay, Alderman Manning, you have the floor. Thank you, Adam. I move to file 1715, and if possible, at the same time, 1717. 1717 and 17 what? 1715 and 1717 to file. And there was a second under discussion. Alderman Rentlice. No? Some of the discussion was I was going to make the motion to file 1717 as well. Okay. Motion to file 17, uh, 15, and 17. Any dis uh, there was a motion. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain. Motion carries. Report of officers 2, 1718, and 1719. I'd ask for a motion to file those two. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to file uh, agenda items 1718 and 1719. Second. Motion and second to file 1718 and 1719 under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Same. Motion carries. 1720 through 1730 to be referred. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Agenda item number 1720, I make a motion to file. Second. 1720, motion and second to file under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Same. Motion carries. Resolutions introduced three, 1731, by Alderman Ryan, approving the amendment to ground lease agreement between the Redevelopment Authority of the City of Sheboygan and Triple Play Real Estate, LLC. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, move to suspend the rules. Is there a second to suspension? Second. Second. Is there any objection? There being, yes, there is. Alderman Rinfleisch. Should no know better. At this time, just we'll request information of why. Before yes, I thank you very much, Alderman Rinfleisch. Alderman Ryan, would you please explain? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. This is for the uh, former triple play, uh, now being known as the Field House. Uh, this is strictly to uh, lease them two slivers of property on, the, uh, on, on two sides of their building that were not in the original land lease. 
This is in order for them to construct their side entrance, which will lead up to the Spikes uh, uh, sports bar, and also to have enough property to uh, build their dumpster enclosures, uh, etc. And they want to get this uh, process underway so they can get open. Thank you. There's no objection to suspension. Okay, then I need a motion to put the resolution upon its I passage. To put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second, 1731, under discussion. We have uh, Alderman Smith. Thank you, Your Honor. It seems to, and, and I understand why Alderperson Reinflesch is constantly asking, why are we asking for suspension here? And although it was described that it's a great project and we want to move this forward, I think we're slipping into constantly using this, and we need to be careful. I will support this tonight. But um, city planning and development, other entities, I would just please, please use this only in, as an exception, not the rule. Thank you. Good point, Alderman Smith. Thank you. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Heideman? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Gisha? And Hannah, 15 ayes. Motion carries. 1732 by Alderman Gisha and Rinfleisch accepting an offer to purchase land in the Sheboygan Business Center. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. And my apologies to Alderperson Smith, but I'm going to ask for suspension of the rules for the purpose uh, and explaining it for the uh, for the benefit of Alderperson Rinfleisch and anyone else. Okay, we need uh, a we need a the, the motion. We need a second. There's a second. Is there any objection? Other than he will explain, Alderman Smith. Okay, please please proceed uh, with the with a motion to uh, put the resolution upon its passage. I make a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Now you can explain. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the reason for the uh, suspension of the rules is basically uh, uh, chronology. There, we needed to redate this offer to purchase, which has been sitting, and we have reviewed it one other time. We needed to change the uh, the date to actually refresh it so that it can be acted upon. Uh, this is for uh, JL French Corporation, one of our largest uh, employers certainly in the area. So it's basically a date revision. This is a document we have seen before. I would feel differently about suspending the rules if it wasn't. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? There, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Just to clarify, there are some changes in here that were at the request of the council, uh, and that's, that's why the revised offer was submitted. Thank you. There is no more discussion. Please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Heideman? Aye. 14 ayes, 1 abstention. Motion carries. 1733 by Alderman Hanna, Meyer, and Montemayor, amending resolution number 1460708, adopted by the council on November 19th to change the makeup of the wellness committee from one alder person to two alder persons. President Hanna. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I need clarification first. Do we need to suspend the rules no. or can we let this go? Just put it upon his passage. I'm going to put it upon his passage. I'm a little tentative right now. You just terrified Alderman Smith over there. I she know. went like that. <laughs> Because I was going to say we can let this one rest. <laughs> did you make the motion? Yes, I did, sir. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second to put 733 upon its passage. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1734, 1739 lies over. 1740 through 1750 to be referred. Report of... Uh, committees uh, 1751 has been taken care of. Report of Committee 6 by law and licensing recommending granting beverage operators license number 7667 with a warning letter sent to include all violations on future applications. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second uh, to accept and adopt, yes. Under, second, under discussion. Uh, uh, under discussion, uh, Ms. Uh, Caesar ap appeared before our committee last Tuesday night, and uh, uh, there was some misunderstanding in her original notices to, to, to appear, but she finally appeared, and the uh, committee is fine with uh, granting the license with a warning. Thank you. Any further discussion? 
There is none. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10-753 lies over. 1754 to be referred. Matter over 11. 1625 we're going to hold for 1640. 1640, resolution number 1490708, Viola Manhanna, Boren, Clayunas, and Gisha, authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into contract for a tax exempt governmental lease purchase agreement. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm, <clears throat> I would move to accept and file 1625 and put resolution number 1490708 upon his passage. Motion and second, that would, the acceptance file would also include 1640. Yes, right? it would. Okay. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? No. Boren? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 14 eyes, 1 no. Motion carries. 1638, resolution number 1470708 by Alderman Boren, authorizing disbursement of the City of Sheboygan, City of Sheboygan's 2007 Community Development Block Grant Funds for the 25th entitlement period to various recipients to promote economic development, create jobs, aid minority groups, develop and upgrade housing, and assist low and moderate income people. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, could I take 1639 along with us because I believe they're yes, similar please do. documents? Please do. Uh, I'd make a motion to put resolution 1638 and resolution number 1639 upon their passage. Is there a second? Second. Second. Under discussion. Alderman Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I uh, need to abstain from, from the vote on 1638 and 39 because I'm a board member of Partners for Community Development. Thank you. Alderman Hanna. I mean, President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I will also abstain because I'm a board member of Partners for Community Development. Thank you, President Hanna. Alderman Clayunas. I guess I should say I abstain because I work at Salvation Army. This thing may not pass tonight. If you I don't know. I had to Anybody else wants to abstain? Sorry. Who welcome? Just, just, I'm just teasing. <clears throat> we have 1638 and 39 to be put upon their passage. The alderman have requested to be to abstain. Please call the roll. Uh, Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Smith. Abstain. Vanderweel. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Verhasselt. Aye. Wangaman. Born? Aye. Gisha? Abstain. Hannah? Abstain. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? Abstain. Eleven ayes, four abstentions. Motion <clears throat> carries. 1641, resolution number 150.708. By Alderman Hanna, Boren, Gisha, and Clayunas, revising the travel expense guidelines adopted by Resolution 647879 is revised to require receipts for all meal allowances effective January 1st, 2008. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution number 150708 be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunas? Aye. And Manny? Aye. Fifteen ayes. You want to do before I call the motion carries. Attorney McLean? Thank you, Your Honor. Just a comment going back to 1638 and 39. Uh, Worked out all right, but 1639 is a transfer of funds, requires a two thirds vote, which is 11. Uh, when everybody started abstaining, I got very nervous that we weren't going to get two thirds, which is 11, but fortunately we did. Uh, perhaps in the future, 
on these CDBG things where there's all these uh, potential conflicts, we might want to uh, request division of the question so that you can vote on separate ones so that we don't run into the possible problem where you don't get a two-thirds vote. You, thank you, Attorney. You can also uh, request the council potential conflict of interest as there probably isn't any, but you're trying to remove any semblance of impropriety or conflict of interest. You can simply ask the council to waive that. That way you put yourself back into a voting capacity and get these things done. Okay? Thank you, Attorney McLean. Uh, resolution 1642, resolution number 1510708 by Alderman Hanna, Boren, Gisha, and Clayunas, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget, establishing revenue and appropriations for contributions received from the Friends of the Senior Center for Computer Equipment, contribution from East Sheboygan Chapter of Tribe and Financial for Lutherans for Join Hands Day, rental fee from Sheboygan Area School District for Wildwood Park Electricity, contribution from Town and Country Garden Club for Landscape and Supplies, contribution from Wisconsin Association of Homes and Services for the Aging, for Police Tactical Team Equipment, and receipt of funds from a Drug Enforcement Agency seizure. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we need to correct the spelling of thriving, but uh, I move that the resolution 1510708 be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. And Meyer? 15 eyes. Motion carries. 1651, General Ordinance number 660708 by Alderman Vanderwill, Kittleson, and Smith relating to no parking zones so as to add a no parking 8, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. zone along the north side of Martin Avenue from the west curb line of North 15th Street to a point 67 feet west thereof. Alderman Vanderwill. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to put the general ordinance upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. 1652, General Order 670708, by Alderman Montemayor, Meyer, Gisha, Heidemann, and Verhassel, amending the municipal code so as to create step four in the pay scale of the position of part time transcriptionist, data entry clerk, MEG unit, in the Police Department, Criminal Investigation Division, Table of Organization. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Rinfleisch? Aye. Fifteen eyes. Motion carries. 1653, General Ordinance, General Ordinance Number 680708, by Alderman Verhassel, Montemayor, Heidemann, Gisha, and Meyer, amending the municipal code so as to delete and add positions in the police department's table of organization. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Or Alderman Verhassel. I make a motion that general ordinance be put upon its passage. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman President Hanna. Thank you. I, I do want to commend the committee for its hard work on this. Um, and as soon as we can get a new organization table out to the alderman, it would be great on the police mm -hmm. department because I get questions all the time. Thank you. You bet. We sure will. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Wangeman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Manny, Meyer, Montemayor, Rinfleisch, and Ryan. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. Where's this one? It's going to finance. 
Attorney McLean, uh, other matters authorized by law. Uh, Attorney McLean. I'm sorry, other matters, hold on. Other matters authorized by law. 1755 is being referred to finance. 1756 is being referred to city plan commission. We have a few more other matters, and when those are done, please hold on. Make motions to adjourn yet. Attorney McLean. I hope this is the same stack that you've got. We're going to find out. <laughs> 1757 is an RO by the Deputy Finance Director Treasurer submitting the trial balance of the city for the period ending October 31, 2007. That will be referred to finance. 1758 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2008 and June 30, 2009. And that goes to law and licensing. Excuse me, hold on. Okay. Okay. 1759 is a communication from John and Shirley Vertasic stating they're upset with Alderperson Meyer's behavior towards Alderman Ryan, encouraging the council to censure Alderperson Meyer and remove her as chairperson of the Committee of the Whole. That will lie over because the matter has been taken care of. It just We can't act on it tonight. It, it, so... I'll have it lie over. We can file that next time around. 1760 is an RO by the Deputy Finance Director Treasurer uh, <clears throat> reporting the attached list of vouchers been audited by the Deputy Finance Director and paid during October 2007. That lies over also? Yes. 1761 is an ordinance relating to traffic signs and signals to add stop signs for both north, south, and east, west traffic at North 7th Street and Center Avenue. And that lies over. Thank you very much, Attorney McLean. Alderman Vanderbilt, you wish to speak, sir? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just wanted to make a statement. After six years, I've decided to take some time off as Alderman and find out what the next stage of my life will have in store for me. It was a difficult decision not to run again because I've enjoyed my years serving the people of Sheboygan as their Alderman. During my life, I've always known when to move on to a different venture. Simply, if I have more bad days than good days, then it's time to find something new. This said, I assure everyone that the recent events that have occurred on this council have nothing to do with my decision. Everyone up here is up here to do the right thing, and they're all good people. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Vanderwill. I think Alderman Vanderwill deserves a round of applause. <laughs> and we also have Alderman Manny has filed uh, papers. You deserve a round of applause too, sir. It's, it's been uh, very interesting years. Uh, Alderman Vanderwill and Al Alderman Maddie started uh, when I was an Alderman too. Uh, we've, we've grown through the process. I want to thank you for all the hard work that you've done and wish you the best in future endeavors. Need a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Stand adjourned. <laughs>